Hello. Hello. Om Ganana Am Twa Ganapati Gumma Vamahe Kavim Kavina Uvashamastamam Cheshtada Jambrampanam Rambhanas Pada Ana Shrinvan Nodhi Vissid Sadhanam Shri Maha Ganapata Yenuha Prano Devi Saraswati Vajay Bhirvajani Vati Nina Mavitrevatu Maha Saraswati Ramaha Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Param Brahma Dasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Guru Ve Sarva Lokanam Vishajay Bhavaro Ginaam Idaye Sarva Vidyanam Sri Dakshina Murta Jenamaha Spin Guru Jarana Ravinda Bhyam Namaha Devim Vachamajananta Devaha Tam Vishwarupa Pashvo Vadanti Sano Mandre Shumur Janduhana Dhenar Bhagasman of the Stataitu Yazam Badishan of Taram Shakte Pokramakal Vasham Parasharat Pajambande Shukadatam Taponidim Yasa Javishnu Rupa Javyasa Rupa Javishnave Namo Vibram and Idaje Vasishta Jaramo Namaha Shri Guru Bhionamaha, Shiva Shakti Samanam Bam Baskara Charja Madhyamam, Asma Shina the Vajantam and De Guru Param Param, Shri Tata Mahatra Purusandari Sameda Shri Chandramoli Shwara Jamaha, Shri Kanchi Kamakoti Pit Hadi with the Jagat Kuru Shri Shankara Charya Shri Jarnayo Ho Pranama, Swasti Shiva the Gilabum and Dalalankara Threat, Rim to the Kodi Devata Sevi, the Shri Kama, Shri Devi Sanatha, Shri Vade Kam Pranatha, Shri Maha Devi Sanatha, Shri Hastigiranatha, Sakshat Karabarama, the Star, September the Namangi, the Kanchi, the Vyakshetre, Sharadham, the Sustitanam, Athur the Sudar, the Mada Jakamalas and a Kamini, the Mill, the Sampul, the Malika, Malika, Nishin, the Makaran, the Jari, Savas, the Kavang, the Kumba, the Jirman, and the Tundal, the Manishi Mandalanam, and over that way, the Vidya, the Noda Sikanam, the Rantara, Lankriti, the Shanti Danti, whom Nam, Sakala Bhavana Chakra Pratishtava, Kashi Chakra Pratishtava, Vikya, the Yashol and Kudana, Nikhil Bash and the Shanta Kantako, the Hartane, the Vishadi, the Vedan, the Markashan, the Pratishtava, Charya Nam, Srimat Paramahamsa, Paribrajaka, Charya Varjashi, Yagat Guru, Shiva Shankara Bhavat Pada, Charya Nam, Adishthane, Simhasana, Vishikta, Shiva Chandra Shagra, and the Sarasuti, Sayyim in Drana, Adishthane, Simhasana, Vishikta, Shiva Chandra, Sarasuti, Sayyim in Drana, Ante was Yiva Jeshi, Vishaka Vijendra, Sarasuti, Shipada Nam, Charan and Neoho, Saprashiam, Sanjari Bantam, Janamas for Maha Sri Guru Bhurma. So, very interesting week, uh, and uh, I think we will have one more class. Uh, uh, before the actual Pran Pradeshta happens in Ayodhya for Lord Sri Ram. Uh, I'm sure each one of you are involved in some way or the other. Uh, we are involved in a big way uh, from the US. There are rallies happening in every city. People are going to wear those kind of t-shirts with Ram Mandir. Uh, and more importantly, uh, maybe by mid of march uh, there will be some surprise news also at least for those who are living in the us about uh, ayodhya ram uh, it might be very interesting for you to watch the technical debate that's going on you know what the shankaracharya says and what uh, the temple trust says and what is the procedure and uh, the main priest also explained the vidhi with which the prana pratishta happens so if in case any of the, one of you have not had the golden opportunity to be part of the kumbha vishegam a temple kumbha vishegam uh, in your lifetime this is the golden opportunity for you to watch closely they are explaining the process they're explaining you the temple structure, construction, procedure. Also, what is the role of Shankaracharyas in us in our community, in our society? A uh, little bit of hint about uh, what is Veda Shastra and what is Agama Shastra. You can learn a lot if you pay attention to the ongoing discussion and debate. Of course, uh, cut out the crap uh, statement that keeps coming out from people who don't have any knowledge. But you pick the technicalities, uh, you will learn a lot. Uh, and uh, to me, it is a beautiful amalgamation of both the northern practices and southern practices. The whole concept of uh, Pran Pradeshta is not very popular in the north. Pran Pradeshta, the whole Vidyan concept is still sustained in the south, which they are imparting in 
the consecration of this temple the uh, uh, oh man i forget the word rather if you are able to uh, recall the word for uh, the perimeter the whole concept of gobaram vimanam and uh, the perimeter uh, i am not getting the sanskrit word that is introduced as a concept from south that concept is not there in the north so there are going to be actually four gopurams dwaras and six temples in those four sites one on each corner and one on one side and the other one on the other side total six temples also indicating the panchayatana concept so regardless of whether you are a shiva worshipper or vishnu worshipper or a shakti worshipper what to do i have spoken about panchayatana a lot so track some of these things you will learn a lot so that is one thing i wanted to share so we completed uh, just the meaning of uh, mantra yeah. number 4 where do we um, where do we track track this information we should track it Uh, um, all the all the news channels or all the uh, debates that is going on on the uh, temple pran pradeshta times now is carrying a good uh, series uh, okay. india today tv is carrying a good series uh, by vishwas kumar okay. he gives you the background of uh, everything about ramayana and uh, significance of the various places uh, significance of panchavati thank you and uh, also why uh, ram rajya the concept of ram rajya and what is ram rajya and why it is relevant in 2024 it will be easy for you to deal with the questions from your children who are probably not so spiritual because of uh, growing up in a western society or even in india for that matter so at least you'll have a good answers to a lot of those questions so nalji if you don't mind just uh, turn your camera a little bit down that's okay because if it comes here it uh, gets very odd yeah thank you so uh, in the uh, <coughs> mantra uh, number 4 <coughs> we said he is the prana that pervades all beings right so we are not talking of prana in just human beings is the prana he means the brahman is the prana that pervades in all living beings and once a person knows about the brahman or the self brahman is self realization right that uh, that brahman is within you once you realize that then that is the truth and there is nothing else but brahman that is the truth everything else is maya then you really stop talking about anything else you don't talk about uh, your achievements you don't talk about what you are who you are you don't talk about your wife you don't talk about your happiness and sorrows once the realization happens you only talk about the brahman <laughs> so that that is the uh, essence of uh, mantra number 4 and uh, it it also means that uh, you cease to operate through a life that is dependent on the five sense functions the indriyangal right show me let me touch and see let me hear and let me taste it only then i'll believe what you're saying uh you you cease to talk about your five sense related uh, functions <clears throat> and uh, when you talk of self realization the main point there is you talk of transcendation transcendentation i hope i'm using the word correct <clears throat> that you go beyond all of these uh, limitations that you are <clears throat> trapped into with the five sensory organs you need to transcend that path and that barrier and go to the other side <clears throat> and uh, whenever you see a perception of duality <clears throat> please understand a very important statement whenever there is a perception of duality him and me and god and me or you and me separate all of us see each other as separate and every single distinction as i said gender distinction race distinction uh, the uh, economic distinction or anything 
wherever you see the duality there is a that that the speech has got a value because that's when you start talking about it you know i am superior to you you are superior to me versus i am happy you are not happy all of those conversations happen but when you start realizing the non duality that whatever paramatma that you talking about the ansh that you have got you are a part of him and you are going to merge with him and when you talk of self realization you have already merged breaking open all the barriers then these relationships lose a value so there is nothing to talk about right you understand it is absolutely in vain talking about uh, i have got iphone 15 you have got iphone 12 all of those conversations don't make any sense am i am i making sense now yes so the the key part is that you have to realize that uh, the brahman is the ultimate truth there is nothing but the brahman so instead of and this i have said in the past too instead of talking about experiences you talk about your realization and do you remember how do you come to experience the whole connection <laughs> No, we experience with the senses. Correct. So the whole process, you remember the way I've described it. Uh, the mind. The uh, mind gets registered. Like. The starting point is the senses, input organs, eyes, yeah. ears, taste, etc. Right. Yeah. And so, those things are perceived, and the mind registers this. Imp- as impressions. And uh, yeah. Continuous yeah. impressions from multiple sources. Yeah. And then these impressions are. red as a movie as a, as if it's a film by the intellect these impressions are stored in the chitta which is the memory the intellect reads it and when it gets added with ego ego i ahankara it becomes experience and which is why my experience is different than your experience makes sense so you move away from all of these things and forget that there is anything called experience you have realized the brahman within yourself uh you stop talking about all these things <clears throat> so we have also talked about happiness and bliss once upon a time in one of the class does anybody remember the difference happiness is transient like you get something you feel it but you see something better and then that is lost whereas bliss is something which is complete you know once uh, and it is not lost by any uh, changes within or outside beautiful yes. beautiful very well described uh any other definition happiness is uh, impermanent bliss is permanent okay that, that's exactly what she said yeah yeah ha huh. what what else you can say okay happiness generally is uh, you know felt uh, from external sources whereas bliss is something that you feel within you it is okay your own internal thing okay mm-hmm. what else <clears throat> bliss is our natural state and happiness is um uh, what we see what we are seeking yes. a temporary feeling that we are seeking okay you have, you have touched upon the, uh, the key point that i was trying to mention contrary to what we believe bliss is consists of the resolutions in the very sense of the objectivity in the conscious subject which means it is not the effect of any physical or mental contact right there is no 
that has to be the uh, true this thing right when you say bliss is what is taking you to the self realization mode and you achieve self realization when you cut yourself off from the indriyas the experiences there is no contact there is no input of uh, a physical contact if bliss is to be achieved through physical contact that means you are still defined within the boundary of the indriya five senses <clears throat> make sense usha not convinced <clears throat> no i just wanted to get it again like yeah so i'm saying there is no physical or mental contact for bliss when you say you realize within yourself the brahman the ultimate truth hmm. you just immerse in yourself in that it is not a result of a physical contact or a mental contact okay makes sense that for example the other uh, 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 avenues for bliss that we have said right you you drink alcohol or you have sex or you have uh, seen something that you have never imagined that you will get uh, uh, sort of a, a jackpot in lottery it's either your your uh, perception of what you have got or the, uh, the the pleasure of having something physical or mental when you talk of bliss it is not dependent on any of the senses it's it's realized internally you're free from all the bonds everything that is holding you up everything that is trapping you is gone you suddenly see a, a different view of the entire world a different view of life itself and that that's only something that you will understand only when you reach that point when you realize that point okay so it is not hampered by experiences or any function outside to the nature of self self is not dependent again on this indriya angle right uh so i remember you saying that uh, it is actually like an alcohol when we have the bliss is similar yes it is similar in in the in the in the in the, in the state of mind yeah. not achieved through the process that we said make sense i'm glad you brought it up alcohol is is through a process of that indriyas that you are experiencing bliss is not real bliss you are getting into the state of mind that is equal to the state of bliss like if if it's a guy is totally drunk the overnight the person okay. would be sleeping effortlessly he has not reached reach the turiya state but he will behave as if he has reached reach the turiya state if you ask him what happened mm-hmm. him or her now these days you can say her also if you ask they will not know what happened correct so that is what it is uh, any other question on this if not we will go to uh, mantra number 5 सत्येन लभ्यस तपसा ह्येश आत्मा सम्यक् ज्ञानेन सम्यक् ज्ञानेन ब्रह्मचर्येण नित्यम् ब्रह्मचर्येण नित्यम् अंतरीरे ज्योतिर्मो हि शुभ्रो यम पश्यन्ति यतय क्षीणदोषा सत्येन लभ्यस्तपसा शेष आत्मा सम्य ज्ञानेन ब्रह्मचर्येण नित्यम् अंतरीरे ज्योतिर्मो हि शुभ्रो यम पश्यन्ति यतयश यतयः क्षीणदोषाः यह मींस हु ज्योतिर्मयः रेस्प्लेंडेंट शुभ्र मींस प्योर atma is atman antashareere within this body 
or within the mind vartate exist yam home cha means and kshina doshah is sinless s i n sin sinless yatayah the sanyasins sanyasins means men of self restraint and when you say men it is not a gender specific thing it's it's referring to the people pashyanti c c means with the eyes esha this atman atma satyena by truthfulness tapasa by the practice of concentration samyak jnanena by true knowledge nityam means constant brahmacharyena by continence labhya is attained so in short the meaning of this mantra is the resplendent the shining bright atman which is pure right it is it cannot be tainted it does not have characteristics does not have attributes whom the sinless sanyasins realize indirectly there is a hidden meaning there that you can realize this atman only if you are living a life of austerity and practice concentration that is when you realize when when you realize the truth when you are able to concentrate on yourself and when you are in pursuit of true knowledge and acquire that knowledge and the most important keyword by unbroken continence brahmacharyam so now if you really look at the whole system the system is consistent in explanation and this will also give you a segue in understanding our system people just react to things without knowing what the system is child marriage why it is done what is the concept of child marriage brahmacharyam so when the, bo- the boys are sent away to the school veda school the parents keep telling don't look at girls don't think of girls that's basically single minded focus to go and do what you're supposed to do learn what you're supposed to learn right so you live a very austere life when you go to gurukul or veda patashala you don't get uh, a sleep number bed to sleep you're supposed to sleep on the floor you're supposed to do the daily chores in the ashram for the gurus wake up early in the morning that's why the concept of brahma murtam is there you achieve many things during the time when the sun comes up and when the sun comes up you are expected to do all the sandhya vandana etc right at the time when the sun comes up so there are very many significant reasons of uh, the advantage of doing those things at that time so when we talk of truthfulness here it is truthfulness in your speech thought and deed it is not about truthfulness of saying oh now i understand there is no iphone it's all maya but it should also be in your thought it should also be in your actions so you can't fool yourself in saying yeah when i'm in the class i understand atman etc but as soon as i'm done with the class then i go back to my routine self how can one live without 
these benefits and experiences, right? So unless you practice that, you are not going to be in the path of any self-realization. So self concept Sorry. Yeah. No, so here we mean that we are using this, but then we are not attached to them, whether they are there or not. Yes. We are able to survive. Exactly. And go back to the amount of time I spent in the last two classes. Mm -hmm. If any one of you have any doubt of whether you are capable or not, right? The question is key question is, yeah, yeah. Kumar, I understand all the theory. You're not the only one saying it. I'm attending this uh, satsang, the other satsang. I'm listening to some serials on TV, regular weekly serials on TV. You all say the same thing, but I still don't know how to go there. And that comes from the fact of fear and misconception that, you know, I can't live without this. So practice in a slow, simple way, smaller way, things that you can let go. It will give you the necessary confidence to say it's after all not that difficult. And it's never too late to get into that path. Don't say, you know, what am I going to do at this age? I've already, I'm almost at the end of my life. No, when you're in 60, you're not end of your life. You've got practically one third of life still pending. Even if you assume you're going to live only till 80, right? So it's all the perception that matters. So again, self-concentration is by withdrawing all the senses and mind. Not just the senses. You, you can't say, okay, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to tie my hands and I'm going to not open my mouth. It's not feasible. What you're in effect saying, controlling your senses means controlling your mind, conditioning of the mind. And there again, all the tools that has been given to you, when, I, when we say about Nyasa, when we say about Tarpana, Archana, etc., Dhyanam, you know, Mudras, every single thing is like your toolkit, right? It's like the screwdriver, the spanner, uh, the pliers in your toolbox. You need to use all of these things to be able to get that mind under control. It is that mind that goes haywire. So if you're convinced when you're listening to Sadhguru on TV or YouTube, and then suddenly you come back and you talk the same regular routine stuff that you've been talking all along, it is because it is a mind that drifts away from what you learned an hour ago versus how you're starting to believe in something else outside of the class. So that is the condition that you need, conditioning that you need to master. So you withdraw all the senses and mind from all the external objects and just focus on the Atman. Meditate, focus on self, look internal. Antakharana, appeal to the inner senses, inner voice. So the true knowledge is the knowledge of the real unity of the self as derived from the teachings of the Vedas and the Gurus. Where you start believing in the non-duality and where you start believing in saying, okay, I am I am I am God, I am I am part of him. The Jivatma, the prana that is in me is is part of him. So we are one and the same. We are not different. <clears throat> Unbroken continence is also another key word in this mantra. So you don't say, yeah, in fact, it's like the gym. Like we all feel that you know, suddenly we have to be physically fit. So you join a gym, you're very excited, you go. You do every evening some workout. Suddenly you go on a vacation for a month. You come back and all that is lost. No wonder you're going to put on weight, right? So here, that key word is unbroken continence. Like you, you start small, you build up on that success and you build more and more and more in that same direction. If you're serious about self-realization. So one example, uh, uh, those who have those who have not been to uh, you know Kailash Yatra, please do so if possible. Sonalji can vouch for what I'm saying. It's a completely different experience, different uh, and everything that you see and experience in the whole course of the Yatra is unbelievable, hard to believe. Our bus was going around the Mansar over. And we could see the, the clouds changing the pattern. The weather changing in a matter of minutes. From good sunshine to cloud and fog and thunder and sort of excessive rain, everything. People saw all shapes of gods in the cloud formation. There were different color that you could see in the Mansarovar. 
if I can call it as a lake. Everything was like mind boggling. So you need to go there to believe it. The amount of cold, the lack of oxygen scares you. But if you see those tall mountains with full of snow and rain and thunder and extreme weather condition, we were putting layers and layers. We are coming from cold countries. We are putting layers and layers of warm clothing. Still, we were shivering. And trust me, there are people who are sitting with just uh, one robe in those caves and gufas and doing meditation for months, for weeks and months and years. They don't feel the cold. They don't feel that uh, uh, hunger. So it is the same set of people that was living like uh, Grihastha, like any all of us. But it is the determination to say, I want to go down that path and realize that has made them do what they're doing. So if they are able to do it, anybody can do it. The key word there is unbroken continence. So unbroken continence is absolute chastity of, chast chastity of the body, uh, but also the perfect freedom from mind. The key word is again mind. It's not just the physical senses that you're talking about. Right? So you don't let it go drift away with any kind of uh, thoughts that takes you away from this whole concept and belief of Atman. Does it make sense? Okay, so uh, I will go into the detail of this uh, meaning of this particular uh, mantra one more time in the next class. I want to finish that uh, guna concept description that we were having some time back. How many of you remember the discussion on the three gunas? Do you have any notes from this class? Do you remember? Yeah, go ahead. All of you can unmute yourself and you can talk. So we have the three gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas. Okay. The gunas is not only in the human beings, right? It's also in the cosmos that you see. You remember that or no? Um, in the cosmos is Pancha Bhuta. Pancha Bhuta is no, no, no. Pancha Bhuta is, is at the end of the whole process. Cosmos is not Pancha Bhuta. Okay, ha, <laughs> so, the, uh, it, it will be a good revision. Uh, Sanjay, if you want to turn your video on, that will be great. Uh, so in the physical body, we see tamas as matter. So if you want, you can take notes again, in case you have not taken down notes at that time. So tamas is matter. Sattva is the order or intelligence. And rajas as the motion or power in the physical world, right? This is the description and distinction of the three gunas in the physical body, sthula sharira. Sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Tamas is matter, the physical matter. Sattva as the order and intelligence. And rajas as the motion or power. Similarly, in the mind, we have each of the gunas present in terms of our mental disposition. The three disposition is peaceful, contemplative, and irresponsible. Now take the whole concept of three gunas to the causal body. So what is it? Peaceful, contemplative and? Irresponsible. Irresponsible. So in the causal body, Sattva is the Dharma field. 
dharma field and all the laws that govern everything laws laws rajas as the projecting power of maya and tamas as the veiling power what is tamas sorry veiling v v e i l i n g veiling power veiling veiling yeah to conceal something conceal something so the eternal consciousness or conscious existence is the brahman in brahman there exists the principle of maya or what we call as the causal matter maya is also referred to as mool agnyanam mool avidya and mool prakriti so causal matter is not a material substance but a subtle agent by which brahman is seemingly conditioned and the manifest universe is brought into the three aspects causal subtle and gross and brahman is the conscious principle that makes knowing possible and you say i have the knowledge of this right brahman is a conscious principle that makes knowing possible and for knowing we already said we need the senses that comes as imprint and whatever takes in the antah karana knowing etc is uh, sorry uh, getting the inputs through the senses is external coming from external sources correct and then those impressions are processed within oneself which is the antakarna the inner instrument and that instrument as we just talked about a couple of minutes ago includes the manas which is the mind buddhi which is the intellect chitta which is the memory and ahankara that is the ego right so maya which is the inert matter it is not a physical matter is the principle of ignorance from the standpoint of an individual because it prevents the antakarna from understanding the true identity of brahman in simple words you are capable of understanding the brahman you are capable of realization but what stops you from doing so is the maya the veil or barrier of maya so we can understand these as two different principles where brahman is the limitless awareness and maya is the causal or original matter they appear to be different but they are two sides of the same coin so slightly drilling down maya is composed of three gunas again sattva rajas and tamas so when you talk of gunas gunas are actually the most subtlest and the most fundamental constituents subtlest means subtle s u b t l e subtlest and most fundamental constituents of which every aspect of the universe or cosmos is made of not just the human beings every aspect of the universe sattva is the nature of light clarity purity insight knowledge intelligence inspiration peace contentment harmony order everything in order and beauty 
So the essential power is that of revelation. Right? You throw light, you see something. It, it reveals what that object is. Correct? If it is muddled, you can't find out what it is. If it is pure or clear, you see what that object is. Any, any one of these characteristics leads to revelation. Padma is able to keep track or losing the connection. Okay. So, that is Sattva is the power of revelation. Rajas is the nat nature of passion, desire, activity, motion, creativity, force, and will. So the essential power is of projection. Tamas is the nature of density or heaviness, groundedness, solidity, practicality, dullness, laziness, ignorance. All of these things have something in common? So how practicality and uh, the other thing comes together? If you don't want to go beyond the hard work of uh, sensing what is the real truth, right? I'm just practical here. I can't, I can't believe or accept things unless I see it or touch it or believe it. It's a shortcut. You don't want to go beyond that. In the name of being pragmatic and uh, progressive or whatever term you want to use, I don't want to use controversial terms, but uh, you just take it easy. Because the moment you say tapas, unbroken inco unbroken continence, brahmacharyam, oh man, this is too demanding. Just take it easy. Chill out, man. This is a very common term that you see in today's generation. That way, At that point of time, you'll realize how far away from the truth you have come to. And you're still drifting in that direction. And imagine if AI is all over your life. Uh, you will have more and more of Tamoguna <laughs> exponentially growing. I mean, if you see browsers, if you're, you're using browsers for browsing internet, there is a there is an AI component plugin in, in built into that. You are using Word, MS Word, PowerPoint, Excel. There is an inbuilt AI tool, right? If you if, if you want, I can forward that video from Satya Nadella. It's called Copilot. You feel very good, right? There is a Copilot. But what does that co-pilot do? Makes you dull, lazy, and not wanting to do anything. The co-pilot will take charge of everything. Imagine, we are already used to it. There are cars, uh, cabs that are without driver here. You don't have a physical driver driving you around in a cab. You just sit in. It senses your mood. It senses uh, everything uh, that you know based on all your social media input. So if probably if you're feeling very hot, it'll turn on the AC. If you're feeling very cold, it'll turn on the heat also. You're moving into a different era, right? So that's that's all uh, where we say is the essential power is concealment, right? So a key takeaway from all of this is don't say a particular guna is good or bad. The moment you start getting into that judgment you are putting yourself back into this whole sense of relativity and objectivity that you keep living your life on, right? This is good, that is bad, do this, don't do that, etc., etc. These gunas are part of the cosmos. So then what are we talking about? Let me see if you are able to give the answer. Including if Radha is listening to this. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping she'll give the answer to this question. So we, we, we talked about the three gunas. We talked about that it is there in the human beings. We talked about that it is there in the cosmos that is around you, the universe. And then we are saying, don't talk about anything that is good or bad. Then what are we talking about? The Brahman? Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking in the context of gunas. Okay. Yeah. We, we learned in detail that they, it exists in humans. It exists in the cosmos. It's everywhere. 
the con of your consent no 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 so why are we saying don't say mm -hmm. something is good or bad see easily we will get into that same natural tendency you you have to pick up what is good and throw what is bad no in in one second we are getting back into our regular life correct the moment i say don't talk about anything good or bad how can you not are you saying that we have to acquire bad habits also and keep it along with the good habits that is not what we are talking about the key word here is we are talking about balancing the gunas you can't live in a impractical world saying that there is nothing to do with the the dullness in you it will exist so there will be times when you'll be going into mood swings and completely not happy so you'll be very happy so instead of swinging from one to the other your whole effort or tapas that you're talking of or unbroken continence that you're talking about or concentration that you're talking about is to bring a balance of all these things so that is where where the word sama comes in for samadhi when you achieve that perfect balance you attain, attain a state of samadhi sama means equilibrium so you take anything in life in in food do you have only sweet or only spice it will never be because you just keep consuming sweet it is actually poison you will have to have a balancing power in everything that you talk about right so in tamoguna ignorance apathy and laziness is associated with tamas that is what we learned so we want to avoid that however it's also responsible for the material substance out of which the physical universe is formed correct it provides the psychological stability which enables you to act based on a thought if you get a thought process it is the tamoguna that enables you enables you to act upon that thought it is also the tamoguna very important here it's also the tamoguna that establishes the physiological regularity which affords us ability to rejuvenate via sleep you have to go to sleep every day you can't just keep awake all the time 24/7 it allows you to rejuvenate so you say oh uh, sleep laziness sleep is equal to laziness so i'm not going to have any tamoguna at all can you imagine that you what will happen to you so you need hyperactivity you need rejuvenation you need hyperactivity rejuvenation so you start balancing it don't have one extreme over the other so in the rajoguna it's the unbridled or mindless and unethical pursuit of gratuitous desires anything that gratifies you don't go after that desire in a mindless pursuit that is something that we want to avoid correct so it doesn't mean completely shut off everything because it is the desire to get certain things done to accomplish our goals that is important so it might be a little confusing if you're not paying attention we are saying cut away from all the desires it's what we have been constantly told but it doesn't mean a desire to do something good or something to accomplish your goal like i have a desire to do my uh, concentration or meditation you don't cut everything off you're talking of cutting off the desire that takes you to any kind of addiction or greed bring it down to a level where it drives a positive action make sense please stop me if you are getting lost because it's very essential to understand these three uh, aspects so even sattva guna if you really uh, analyze there is a drawback
so if you have a satvik mind you also without your knowledge transition from self inquiry to self knowledge you only said no inquire about self understand self know about self so going down that path if you go too much down that path you will say i don't want to do anything with anybody the knowledge also i will gather by myself no you need a guru that can guide you down the path even to realize yourself or understand yourself you need a guru that can guide you down that path so excess sattva guna can instill a sense of spiritual conceit where you start to believe i am a very advanced seeker because somebody told me that you know forget everything and now i have given uh, iphone i have given up uh, watching movies i have given up news now i am a very advanced uh, spiritual seeker it can put you into a false sense of pride or put you into a sense that you are already a realized being and this is something that you will see very common i don't want to take names but there is there is a great uh, swami who has got millions of followers and he has established on island and which he is calling it as a country issuing visas and passports there are people who believe that he is god so something in that person makes him believe that he has already become god correct so the danger of going to the extreme is what we are talking about which is where you need to do a balance and uh, maintain an equilibrium amongst all of these matters so the causal matter which is the pradhana or prakriti and the conditioning effect of that matter on brahman the causal matter is the pradhana or prakriti and the conditioning effect of that matter on brahman together is called maya all along you've been saying what is maya maya this is a clean one one line answer to that i'll repeat it again so maya is both the causal matter that is pradhana prakriti and the conditioning effect of that matter on brahman so the initial effect that maya exerts on brahman is to cause it to black out you're blinded consequently avyakta which is the unmanifest state is brought into being if you are finding it difficult to understand these terms you can skip optional i mean it doesn't you don't have to get into it because it's slightly uh, i'm taking you down uh, deeper into the vedanta philosophy conversation so the state in which we are blacked out with the reality because of this maya which is a conditioning effect on the brahman the state is also referred to as the macrocosmic causal body macrocosmic so unlike the causal body that is associated with the jiva which is the individual person maya is not a storehouse of personally accumulated karma and so it is not something that requires uh, uh, or creates a body through which it can experience itself so the original unmanifested state from which all the manifestation springs is referred as avyakta so avyakta is also consisting of three gunas so each guna that is sattva rajas and tamo guna has two basic powers avarna shakti means the power of concealment and vikshepa shakti power of projection each guna has both the power so by means of these two powers each of the guna produces a different upadhi we'll come into what is the meaning of upadhi in a second so understand the three guna the three gunas has got both the powers avarna shakti the power of concealment 
and vikshepa shakti the power of projection and by means of these two powers each guna produces a different upadhi that accounts for one of the three essential aspects of manifestation so an upadhi is a limiting adjunct upadhi is the limiting adjunct or the conditioning agent that seemingly lends its qualities to the object upon which it is having a conditioning influence very powerful you can replay the youtube video to rewind and replay these things i guess the call is likely to end <laughs>